It is now time for the NFL Week 9 Breakdown. Boop, 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 breakdown. Break it down. Alex is with us. Alex, thank you for joining us. Anytime. In true medical degenerate fashion. Yep. Yep. Dealing with trauma. <laughs> dealing with trauma. Aren't we all? Alex is just dealing with real trauma. Other people's trauma. <laughs> physical trauma. Physical trauma. Mental. All the traumas. First in Thursday night football, the Eagles took on the Texans. The Eagles stay undefeated, beating the Texans 29-17, scoring in each quarter and staying the course despite a 100-plus yard rushing effort from Damian Pierce. Miles Sanders and Kenneth Gainwell had rushing touchdowns for the Eagles, and Jalen Hurts threw for two more to pace the Eagles in this game. Are we noticing that Jalen Hurts has now has like TV commercial deals? That like, we're I seeing? Don't... It yeah, was I, oh, I didn't know what it was. Can't remember. Me either, but I saw his face and I was like, wow, that, that's a new thing. I think he's, I mean, he's not obviously like a, an elite quarterback in the league, but he's very serviceable and I think he runs the team well. Must be good enough to get the uh, the nod on the commercials. Right? You can strike I mean, while the iron's hot for the uh, for those people looking for the, the new yeah. face. Yeah, don't be on too many commercials. Look what happened to Baker. That's true. <laughs> uh, well, Baker, he had a resurgence today. We'll go back to yeah. Uh, next, we have the Colts in Sunday football taking on the Patriots. The Patriots defense silences Sam Ellinger and the Colts, adding a touchdown to a game that was already well in hand as the Patriots win twenty six to three. Bill J- Belichick's dominance over new starting quarterbacks reigns supreme. Yeah. So I want to go back to the Eagles for a hot second. Okay. So everybody wants that undefeated season all the way out, that perfect season. Their schedule goes Commanders, Colts, Packers, the next three games. Then they run into the Titans, which is a 50-50 game. Then they run into the Giants, also I would think 50-50. Then Bears, then the Cowboys. Then Saints, then Giants again. They'd have to really F up at this point. The Giants could get them. No, it's like the Cowboys. Yeah, well, the Giants. Know, and the... Those divisional games where you play that team twice a year, every year, you just never know what can happen. Well, is there a prop bet out there that we could put money on that they go undefeated? Uh, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. It's probably more – you're going to see more of the prop bets to win Super Bowls. I would love to put money on them going undefeated. Undefeated in the regular season. Yes. You can look it up. I'm going to. I just wanted to know if you had seen it. Nah. What I'm really looking at is when is the Eagles bye week? I don't think had, it's they, over with. Yeah. They've already had it. So that, that could be a grind towards the end of the season for them yeah. having an early bye week. Um, next, moving on to the Packers taking on the Lions. Packers injury woes continues. Eight players go down on this one, including starting running back Aaron Jones and rookie wide receiver Romeo Dobbs as the Lions survive a last-minute drive from the Packers, winning 15-9. to Aaron Rodgers throws three interceptions, and the Lions took advantage, despite being outgained in this game, 389 yards to 254 for the game. How do feel, you feel about your boy? Hit the panic button on the Packers right about now. I just want to say, and I could wait until the betting show for this, but I'm going to bring it up now. And I don't remember if I said this before the show started or on the show, but I was like, I really want to bet the Lions money line. And y'all were like, don't be stupid. Oh, no, you definitely said it. And we definitely said that back to you. (laughs) But, I mean, I don't think think any of us talked you out of it. If we did, then that's your own fault. (laughs) I think the Packers season, much like my officiating season, it's (laughs) over. Oh, Oh, let him know, Nate. Let him know. Strong words for Nate, who ran nine miles this past weekend. Yep, two games, nine miles. Oh, I think meant just for fun. I'm like, why would you officiate games and then run nine miles? Yeah, huh, no, it just whenever you got a let's see, I think we had 80 combined points Friday night, and that, that four, over hit, and 60 combined, roughly 60 combined on Saturday. Wow, a lot of moving up and down the field for you. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. especially Friday night because it was a six man. Usually we work five, and my position on six man. I have to run all the way back to the opposite 40 and give the ball to the kicker. So every <laughs> touchdown, 
60 yard jog, every touchdown, 60 yard jog. Not fun for fat guys. <laughs> do you truly jog or do you like do like the half jog, half walk? No, I truly jog. Oh, look at that guy. You never know when a Zerber can be there. The one time you get caught slacking when they ding you. Ooh, sounds like a topic for later. Observers to the officiating crew. Yeah. Next in Sunday football, we have the Chargers taking on the Falcons. Justin Herbert and the Chargers get a win against the Falcons 2017. Herbert throws for a touchdown. Austin Eckler adds one on the ground and grabs the sole Herbert touchdown for the Chargers. Cordero Patterson notches two rushing touchdowns for the Falcons, including an absolute explosion of one, just burying a middle linebacker on the goal line. Let, let's hope they keep us up and people come back healthy, but I don't still don't have a lot of faith in them. Yeah, because didn't the Chargers, number one, number two receivers, weren't they both out today, Jim? Yes. Indeed they were. No bueno. Next, in the biggest surprise of the day, the Bills taking on the Jets. The Jets continue their surprising season, taking one away from the Bills 20-17, to picking off Josh Allen twice and using a balanced attack to improve to 6-3, and three, while handing the Bills their second loss of the season. Are the Jets for real real now? I mean, you can argue that, yeah. I mean... Yeah, there's an argument. I mean, Josh Allen definitely did not play Josh Allen like today, but what's that saying? Any given Sunday. It's a good movie, too. Indeed. And, you know, I I feel like the Jets are definitely in the conversation now. I still don't think that uh, we all believe it yet, but they have not. uh, They've demonstrated their ability to win games and win against tough opponents. Yeah, I'm going to look at the Jets' schedule. They got New England next week. They got Minnesota. Wait, no, no. Why did it just jump? I'm sorry. They got New England, Chicago, Minnesota, and then Buffalo again. So this is a trying part of their schedule. This yeah. Week and then and the they, next four weeks. And then the four weeks after, they have Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle, Miami. So it's got, it's a tougher road to hoe. Yeah. They, they will definitely have to earn their keep. Yeah. Vikings taking on the Commanders. The Vikings mount a 17-point comeback in the fourth quarter to take down the Commanders 20-17 to behind a 100-yard gain from Justin Jefferson and a two-touchdown passing game from Kirk Cousins. The Vikings proved a 7-1. and Do we think that the Vikings can sustain the rest of the season and see any postseason success, something they have had difficulty with? That's a very loaded question. I, do they think that they'll sustain the rest of the season? Yes. Do I think the postseason success? No. Nate, That's... what do you think? What are your thoughts, Nate? I, I think it depends on how they finish out the year. I mean, they're seven and one right now, and I'm trying to look real quick at the standings in their division. I mean, Detroit, that was what their second win. Let's see where we're we at. Two Super Bowl, baby. The yeah, Packers so suck. they're seven and one. Packers and Bears are both three and six. So they've already got a four more victories than the next team in their division. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna get through. Yeah, so it's, to me, it's just a matter of how do they finish going out in the second half of the season. Because, I mean, even if you look way ahead right now in the playoffs, I mean, 7-1 and one and you've got Philadelphia undefeated still at 8-0. and no. I mean, The next closest team behind them is Seattle, who's 6-3. and three. I think it's very reasonable. I mean, I think they have a very clear path to get to the postseason. I will be interested to see how they perform in the postseason. I think that in their division, they're a great team. But I think there are outside of their division teams that are much better than them. I know I'm going to catch all kinds of shit for this, but I don't have a lot of faith in Cousins. He's a good workhorse, but like I don't think he's elite. But what was it they showed his record in primetime games is just atrocious? Yeah. That's always been the knock on Kirk Cousins. He can put up the stats. He's serviceable. But when it comes to crunch time – he usually crumples. Yeah, it's just like when the light shines brightest and all the pressure's on, it's just it get, either gets to him or something happens. Yeah, yeah. that's my take. There go. Panthers taking on the Bengals. Joe Mixon has a hell of a day, accounting for five total touchdowns, four rushing, one receiving, as the Bengals explode for 42 points and beat the Panthers 42-21. Joe, Bear is on, Joe Burr is only sacked twice in this game, Jim. Ooh, the under. The under hits and Baker Mayfield relieved PJ Walker in the second half, tossing two touchdowns and leading the Panthers to 21 second half points. Bengals now waiting on the outcome of the Ravens Saints game tonight 
to see if they'll be tied with Baltimore or one game back in the AFC North. I'm going to be real honest here. I think that I get that Baker's a better quarterback than P.J. Walker. I mean, I think that to not play Baker over P.J. Walker would be a foolish move. Right, I think that I th- this is my my take with PJ Walker going in. I think that was a okay, Baker. You need to take some time away. Things are not going well, and it's only going to continue down a bad path without you taking a time to to regather yourself. That's so the I kind of shit they should have done in Cleveland with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially whenever he was hurt, even if it's his non throwing. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, yeah. you're putting yourself in a bad situation. They let his ego run like wild in Cleveland. I don't think he – I I mean, yeah, does he have a little bit of an ego? Yes. But I've never, like, looked at him and thought, you know what, he's one of those asshole ego guys. Okay, so take my Ohio homer out of it. This man took the Oklahoma flag and put it in the center of Ohio State's field when they beat them. Like, there is ego there. Something that everybody would want to do, though. He yeah, just had the opportunity. I, I can see a lot of people that I don't consider, like, arrogant that just are celebrating a win and do that. Okay. I, you guys say so. This is a point that I think it, personally, which I'm not saying I wouldn't if he did it to WB. Uh, I'm not. I, I thought it was a cool move. Like I'm not necessarily taking it personally. I just think he's one of very few quarterbacks who run on emotion and ego to get him through things, and that is one a giant example of that. I think what I I think my point is I see the, the emotion part absolutely. I think he runs on emotion. I think he runs on high energy and adrenaline. I don't. Ego to me is like Terrell Owens type of player, or uh, I don't think he's that far from that. Daniel Brown, I don't feel like he is. Just because he's not good doesn't mean that he doesn't have that ego. I think he's more team oriented than other people. Would you him. call it more ego or more cockiness, though? It's a fine line, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like but I see the line Nate strong. I yeah, see Nate's point. If you're looking at Terrell Owens and Antonio Brown, the two that Alex is putting there, they had. They had the clout to have an ego and be mm-hmm. cocky because they were very good. Baker Mayfield may have an ego, but he cannot be cocky, or at least nobody's ever going to recognize that he should be cocky because right. he hasn't proven it yet. Yeah, we'll find out. Raiders take on the Jaguars. Despite a two-touchdown performance from Devontae Adams and the Raiders, the Jags outscore the Raiders 17 to nothing in the second half on their way to a 27-20 win. Travis Etienne with another solid day with 100-plus yards rushing to complement an accurate day for Trevor Lawrence, who went 25-31 with a touchdown. So hear me out here, okay? I still believe the Jaguars are not a bad team. But do we? Be- could I say and get away with, is it possible that – Trevor Lawrence needs better coaching at his position in the NFL. I think Trevor Lawrence needs better wide receiver weapons to complement what he's able to do. Okay, I think yeah. I think that's what he needs. Now, is coaching maybe part of it? Yeah, maybe. But I think that's what's missing for him. Yeah, they really got truly no number one receiver. I mean, Christian Kirk was a two or three at best when he was in Arizona. Uh Marvin Jones, I mean, he really wasn't that great as a true number one in Detroit, but granted, it's Detroit. Um, and I don't even know who else is Z- down there. Zay Jones is there, but yeah. he's, he's like Evan a, a Ingram, third or fourth. Yeah, Evan Ingram at tight end really never lived up to much when he was in New York. So really, it's a bunch of, I don't want to say unproven guys, but it's a bunch of guys that really haven't been the guy anywhere they've been. It's, since like, the island, it's like the Island of Misfit Toys. Yeah. Okay. So, Which I, can, I think you blame Urban for. Well, on the other side, though, what about the Raiders, though? I mean, ugh, ugh. you bring in Josh McDaniel, supposed to be this guru on offense from New England. You go out and trade for Devontae Adams. You have Josh I, Jacobs. I, you have Darren still Waller. Send their tanking. They're doing their I mean, tanking. Darren on Waller's been inactive for the past few games, too. Right. I mean, you've got the weapons there. you got your coach that you think you wanted, but I mean, there's another team that I think shits hit the fan. And if I'm Josh McDaniels, I'm very uncomfortable right now. No, he'll ride one more year. It's Vegas. Uh, yeah. I think they have to ride him one more year. I mean, they came in with so much fanfare that mm-hmm. look, they, they'll ride it out at least through halfway through next season to see what happens. I see them getting rid of Derek Carr. I don't disagree with that. 
I just don't know what his contract situation is and who's going to want to eat that up if it's not towards the end of it. Good old Cleveland. Give him a chance. Uh, they've got their own contract situation happening. Well, I think he's gone. We'll see. Mm, we'll see, too. Dolphins taking on the Bears. The Bears trot out their new wide receiver, Chase Claypool, who only has one reception on the day. But Justin Fields shines again with three touchdown passes, 178 yards rushing, and another score on the ground. But it's not enough as the Dolphins improved to 6-3 and three with a 35-32 win over the Bears, two of three for three touchdowns, and Tyreek Hill has 143 yards receiving. Too many yards rushing for Fields. Well, too many yards. What was, how, how did I put it last week, which you agreed with? He's running for his life with a purpose. Yes. Now, without watching this game, I'm just looking at the box score. So he had 15 attempts. How many of those were design runs, roughly? Do we have any idea? Well, I know his biggest run was like 60 or 70 yards, and it was not designed. Yeah, 15 for 178, touchdown, and 61 was a long. Yeah, that was not designed. It was a broken play, which he made happen. But Dolphins, three more weeks before I will recognize anything about them. Three more weeks. Let's go. I'm excited for that. Seahawks taking on the Cardinals. The Seahawks continue their improbable season. (laughs) Alex, moving Kyler Murray to 0-2 since the new Call of Duty release, winning 31-21 behind another strong outing from Kenneth Walker to third. He runs for two scores, accompanied by a two-touchdown performance from Geno Smith. Alex, how are we feeling about Seattle? I would like to say that I put my money where my mouth was and took the Seahawks money line, and they proved to get it done. Do I think this is all Geno Smith's doing? No. Do I think Geno Smith is having a very good season? Yes. I think he is serviceable. I think he is good. Um, I do think that Kenneth Walker the third is – looking very good yeah he's he's the motor good. and you think about it, they still have good receivers i mean they still have tyler lockett and dk metcalf i mean yeah. they're not a bad team regardless i think it's awesome for me that i get to see that Geno smith leads this really good team i think Geno smith is doing fantastic for his expectations do you think russ is just like that meme of i can't remember what superhero character it is like laying in bed looking at the the picture of whatever it is. Yeah. Is it Wolverine? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, Pete Carroll, is he the early front runner for coach of the year right now? So that was what I was going to say. I, why does Pete Carroll not get enough adulation? I think right now he's not because you have Mike McDaniel in Miami. You have Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia. You potentially have Mike McCarthy in Dallas. You have a lot of, we have a lot of good teams right now, and they're good, but they're not, like, the top, top yet. But all those teams have show ponies. Pete has no show pony. No, I was going to say, also throw Robert Sala in that conversation. Yeah. yeah it definitely, I agree. So we're saying Gina Smith is not a show pony. He is no show pony. Alex, I think you can even get behind that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Collegiate Gino was a show pony. Yes. A three headed a three headed show pony. Had he been in another school, maybe. No, he no? was the same player he was at WVU that he was <laughs> anywhere else. Shut up or not going there. <laughs> and lastly in the Sunday afternoon slate, the Rams taking on the Bucks. With offense at a premium throughout the game, Tom Brady does goat things with the game on the line, leading the Bucks to a 60 yard touchdown drive in under a minute within the last minute of the game, helping the Bucks to a share of division lead with the Falcons, beating the Rams 16-13. to Brady surpasses the 10,000-yard passing mark in this one, tossing the winning score to tight end Cade Otten. In a game with two underachieving teams, who has the better opportunity to make something of their season? I think Tampa still has the better chance to do something with their season, given the strength of their division right now. But Mm -hmm. also look at the West. I mean, it's pretty wide open still, too. But... But it, it was 100,000 yards, not 10,000, but still, holy 100,000, my bad. I yeah. was going to be like, I feel like 10,000 is not very much. Oops, 100K. I was like, in this year? Holy shit. <laughs> but no, like, watching that game, I was like watching paint dry how bad both of those offenses were. I mean, you had a couple chunk plays here and there, but other than that, I mean, that game could have put me to bed. 
that was a was a trot out the punter and I hope they should field position, which in many cases they did. There was what a 70 yard punt, a couple 60 yeah, yard a, punts. Yes, a 68 yard punt for Camarda and then a 74. And then I don't know how far that one would have been that just touched the goal line. But as soon as that game's over, I looked at my parents or whatever. And I'm like, well, I hope Jake Camarda enjoys his MVP award. For- So I want to back up to Fields running. Did you know that why he do, broke? Why do you want to? No, we're not backing up to Justin he Fields. He broke an NFL record for okay. rushing today. Okay. Uh, that, is, that's too much running. That's too much running. <laughs> like, how shitty is your quarterback? Oh, he broke an NFL rushing record today. A quarterback rushing record? I'm trying to think. I'm like, I'm sure Michael Vick. Yes, a quarterback <laughs> rushing record. Good for him. What was the set record? Most rushing yards in a single game for a quarterback. Where's Vic stand on that list? I'm sure that's what he passed, right? Has to be. My, he, he, he passed Michael Vick. Michael Vick had 173. Ooh. He had 178. Yeah. With a purpose. With a purpose. With a purpose. <laughs> uh, and in Sunday Night Football, the live look-in for the Chiefs versus Titans, Nate. Right now, the Chiefs are driving. They got first and goal. And for the Titans, Malik Willis is making another start. Ooh, not good for the Titans in this one. Uh, I know of interest to Jim is how Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is doing. Yes, I, I need I need a nice showing, please. I'm saying for the very yes. looked up and down, I think I've all I've seen is Mahomes to Kelsey a couple of times. I just need him to get 10 points. I don't think it's that hard, but we'll see. Yeah, if you get him in the end zone once, he should be good. Yeah, that's the hope. That is the hope. And looking ahead to Monday Night Football, we have the Ravens taking on the Saints. Who are we picking? This one's a t- kind of a toss-up. I mean, so many guys are out. I mean, who do the Saints say they're already playing without Ingram and somebody? Well, yeah. Thomas is out for the season. Oh. Apparently his toe. Uh-oh. Thomas's toe is uh, is a concern. Out for a while, right? He's out for the season. Said, yeah. Shut it down. Ohio State Homer, you have anything to say about Michael Thomas shutting it down again? He's a lame duck. He needs to retire. Mr. Slant without Drew Brees is cannot slant anymore. He's he's done. But yeah, so he's out, Ingram's out, somebody else is out. I can't remember who. They already ruled. And then what I see for the Ravens, Mark Andrews is doubtful, and so is Gus Edwards. Yeah, I think this is going to be a defensive struggle. And I'll be honest, in this defensive struggle, I would actually lean towards the Saints. I got the Ravens by 14. I take. I think my bet is on Ravens minus two and a half. Yeah, I think Lamar is going to have to do Lamar-like things more so than usual. Ravens but, show out. But yeah, he should have no issue. I mean, I mean Andy Dalton's still starting for the Saints, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, give me Lamar. Okay. Chiefs are in the red zone. Who's that? Chiefs are in the red zone. Ooh, Let's go. And Baltimore Nate? a one and a half point favorite tomorrow night. Monday night. Nate, Nate, what's the live look in? Third and goal from the 17. Oh. Not looking good for you there, Jim. Nah. Okay. Fourth and goal from the four. <laughs> Ooh. Who got the pass? Uh, I'm trying to see. I'm assuming it was a pass. Kind of close to the and now a close up of Andy Reid. <laughs> Is that Grace on his That's hot dog. <laughs> Some hat uh, tag. Uh, Hardman who had that pass there for 13. Okay. All right. All right. Which wraps up NFL Week 9 and brings us 